Hello, Simon. So I'm going to summarize my hedgehog model report. So I believe that I have what it takes to be an entrepreneur. The first thing I did was a personality test. It stated that I'm extroverted, intuitive, reliant on feelings, judging, and assertive. Entrepreneurs should be more extroverted as they need to communicate with their customers, intuitive as they need to think through things, a critical thinker because they need to solve problems, assertive because they need to communicate with others, their fellow peers, and delegate their tasks. I have gained all these insights from my research on successful entrepreneurs. I realized that I lack critical thinking skills and I feel to analyze the situation thoroughly. And this I will continue to work on by meeting more people and putting myself into tough situations that will cause me to think. In addition, I did a wide range of research on guest lectures as well as successful entrepreneurs and I'll name two of them. Steve Jobs and Kiichi Toyoda. So of all of them, I figured that there are two important traits that they all have. And those traits are communication skills and self-confidence. In order to be a successful entrepreneur, you need to communicate with others, find partnerships. In addition to that, you have to delegate your tasks to your subcoordinates. And self-confidence is important because you need to believe in yourself the entire way, that you won't look back and try ulterior more alter ulterior paths. Self-confidence is also important because if you don't believe in yourself, how can you get others to believe in you? How can you get your supporters to believe in you? But most importantly, how can you get people that works for you to believe in you, to believe that you can do this? So then I decided to explore my hedgehog model. So this is an example of my hedgehog model. So my decided to divide everything into a few categories. So areas of strength versus transferable abilities. And then I have areas of passion, passionate goals. And next, I have profitable fields with low risks, as well as profitable fields with high risks. And ultimately, when everything comes together, that's your ultimate goal. So from this, I come up that I should do design. And in addition to that, I also talked with a lot of people. Well, one of them is my friend Cher. She's turning 80 this year. And she was one of the first few people that I have met when I first came to Canada. But after I moved to New Westminster, I lost connection with her. But recently, I was talking with her to see my, how I'm doing. And taking advice from a very experienced person, as she is a teacher. So from what I learned from her is that entrepreneurs, they don't follow their boss. They have the freedom to do whatever they please. And in addition to that, I should learn from fellow designers. And this is a very important point because all designers gain knowledge from others. So if, in order for me to be a successful designer, I have to learn knowledge from other designers. In addition, she taught me that a degree in design by itself is not really enough. And at first, when I look at this, I was like, mm, that's kind of correct. But then I realized that this is really important. Just a degree, many people have design degrees, but what makes them stand out? That can be their communication skills, that can be their self-confidence, and it can also be the works they have completed. So even though I, she helped me realize that this feels really hard, it's really competitive, and at that time, I was kind of not very energetic anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but by the end of the day, I realized that this is the field I want to go into. And all fields are difficult. They all require hard work. None, nothing in this world is easy. So through that, I will continue to work hard to be an entrepreneur in the field of design. Thank you.